Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Osric Five Hundred One. Today, I want to go over the new settlement and claim flag system coming to Atlas in March, and I want to go over this because a lot of people in you know Reddit and forums and stuff like that seem to not understand the full system and some of the information with it. And we do have a ton of information. So if this system ends up being a bit different in game than it is on paper. It'll pretty much be either it's changed and we're told or it's going to be different and we weren't told, which I seriously doubt. It can change um, up to the release date, which some stuff probably will, especially like the numbers and the specifics like that type of stuff. But most likely the overall system is going to stay the same. So I wanted to go over some of the patch notes and then go over something that could help kind of explain it a bit better. I was going to work in game. So... The patch notes are claim flags. C claim flags have been eliminated. Claim flags can no longer be used to steal structure ownership on land. Claim flags can no longer be merged into other companies. There will be a hard limit on a total number of claim flags per company. For example, 20 numbers can be adjusted. A claim flag cannot be placed without a tax bank. Claiming an island will take a fixed amount of time plus an additional amount per claim flag owned. For example, one hour to claim and plus one hour per owned claim flag. Numbers can be adjusted again. Declaiming will always take a fixed amount of time. For example, two hours, numbers can be adjusted. So basically with all those numbers can be adjusted, basically they just have they just put a number in there and it's most likely going to change depending on what players want. Claim flags... Now we'll have an upkeep cost, which is paid from the tax bank. The upkeep cost will be an assortment of resources. The upkeep cost will scale on the size of the island, the total number of claim flags owned a company has, and how different, how many different companies slash players are building on that island. Players can only place items into the tax bank that go towards upkeep. Claim flag will have a grace period after a successful claim to allow resources to gather in the tax bank before upkeep is charged. The claim flag will visualize if the upkeep will not be met, so players are able to contribute directly to the tax bank. The tax bank will now stack resources like a ship resource box. Settlements, which are what a claim flag which owns an entire island will be called. Settlement owners must set a window of vulnerability currently set to 9 hours where their island is raidable. Outside of the windows players outside of that window, players, structures and ships will not take damage from other players. There will be a timer on players before they receive the invulnerability status. Anchor anchor boats or dock boats will follow the same rules if they are in the radius of a settlement. Non-settlement owners who have cannons on ships and are anchored shall not be allowed to fire cannons outside of wartime. Settlement owners can freely damage other characters and structures on their island. Settlement owners can set tax rates on their island which will automatically be deposited into the tax bank. Structures that are built on the settlement which do not belong to the settlement owner will have a DK timer. Players, player-run shops which are placed on islands can be taxed by settlement owners. Then declaring war. Players can purchase a war token, significant cost, which can be used to declare war on an island. When war is declared on the island, players must select a scheduled time in the future, three days to a week. Only one war can be scheduled at once. There is a cooldown after a war is ended before another war can be declared on the island. Declaring war is per island, so it is possible to declare war against multiple islands at the same time. The UI will indicate whether an island has experienced wartime soon or is currently in wartime. Wars will last a fixed period of time they still like 12 to 24 hours when an island has been deemed warlike building rules no longer apply after the war has ended the normal rules are enacted again so i've gone over this before but i just want to go over that base information before we talk about it so basically there's only good the only claim flags in the game are going to be one claim flag per island if you claim the island which you need to set a tax bank down to do you will own that entire island Anyone can still build there, but you will set tax rates. You're, you will have the tax bank, and you will have to make sure the upkeep is paid for every time it's required. Now, any other players who build there, you can tax for resources into the upkeep, and the more groups of other people that don't own the island that are building there reduces the cost. So the overall upkeep costs increase for your company the more islands you have 
and then the rank of the island. So as you can see here, this is basically the upkeep cost, which is probably the thing a lot of people don't understand the most and how this is going to affect people wanting other people to build on the island. The upkeep cost will scale on the size of the island, the total number of claim flags a company has, and how many different companies slash players are building on the island. So as you can see here, I just numbered these islands in one of the actual grids. And there's going to be one more island basically in every grid. But this grid kind of shows um, easily what this system is going to be based on the information we have. So there's a small island here that would be rank 1. We have a medium sized island here that would be rank 2. We have a massive sized island right here, rank 3. So the higher rank, the more upkeep cost that island takes every time it requires an upkeep payment. But um, the more islands that company owns, the in every okay so basically every island that company owns increases the upkeep cost of every island they own um which will make it so mega tribes have to actually have like a lot of players actually doing stuff actually farming if they want to keep a lot of islands there's going to be a hard cap on it whatever that will be so mega tribes can't just own as much as they want and um the bigger the islands the more that caught the more that island upkeep as well which is also increased by how many islands they own but a big difference um that will actually want people other people building on those islands is any other groups of companies slash players building on the island to reduce the upkeep of that up cost up keep cost i can't speak upkeep cost of that island for every group of people living there besides just reducing the overall upkeep costs of that island they also will get tax and that goes into the tax bank which will help pay the upkeep so say a big company owns this massive island right here these islands are the biggest in the game they're actually really big they're probably close to the size of the arc island entire map but say this they own this island say you know it costs them 10,000 of like every resource. We have no idea the cost. These are just, I'm just putting in a random number. Say they own 10,000 of like every base resource. And then say one company, one new company starts building there. Maybe they get a 10% cost reduction or something. Who knows if it'll be that much? Probably, maybe, probably not though. But say one company comes and builds on there of like five people and it gives a 10% cost reduction. Now it costs 9,000 of every resource and that company is going to be getting taxed to whatever you set the tax to, which will also help pay it. This will cause a lot of companies to want other people on their islands just for the cost reduction to the upkeep because it most likely will be some sort of percentage based thing. So they will want other players to build there. Now, um, these islands are PVE for all of the day except nine hours so the owners of the island set that nine hours to when their island can be attacked and it enables pvp until that nine hour point everything is pvp based there's a little bit along like along or around the island in the water so ships and stuff are um pv as well so they can't be raided during that nine hours it's basically all out pvp but during the PvE times, the settlement owners can still hurt any other people that's not in their company on the island. They can still hurt those people. They can still hurt their buildings. So even though anybody can build on your island, if there's someone building there that you don't want on your island, during the PvE time, you can just destroy their base and kill them off your island. Now, there's most likely going to be some type of of exploits or something they're gonna need to be fixed and stuff but i think this is overall a much better system now adding this into the overall company size being halved um they're being added new islands to every grid at i'm pretty sure one island or more to every grid um the alliance size being reduced the amount of alliances you can be in being clamped to two um this is just going to add 
so much more life into the game because small companies can actually have islands to build on. Even if they don't own them, they can actually have chances to own islands. People have a lot better chance of building in the biomes they actually want to build in. If you want to build in a tropic biome, they were all taken before it. Now you have a chance. There's more islands, a lot less being owned by people. Mega tribes being nerfed. Um, so that's pretty much the overall of the settlement system i hope this helped anyone who's a little bit confused if you have any um if you're still confused you can post a comment down below i can answer anyone else can answer um but in my opinion on paper the information we already have for these new systems is that this is going to fix a lot of the problems arc had and atlas had um about the game starting to feel like a job especially on official servers um it feeling like you can never get any permanence in the game which these games are kind of built to be empire builders um and you can never have any permanence unless you had a ridiculous amount of people so just in my opinion i think all these systems are going to work together in a really positive way to get a lot of players back into the game to make the game much more balanced so it feels more like a fun game and less like a job um it's going to take a little bit of the hardcore out of the game but you can still pvp anywhere else in the game all in the waters the golden age runes lawless um grids anywhere else you can still pvp all you want which will also make it so people want to pvp more because it's much harder to retaliate against your actual bases um when you go on pvp because before if you went pvp there was these massive alliances um that are going to be clamped now you would go attack them um or you'd pvp in the open waters and then they would come raid your base when you're offline or something so that will fix a lot but Subscribe if you want to see more Atlas content. Leave a like if you like the video. Leave a comment down below what you think about Atlas as a whole, what you think about this Big March update, and what you think about the new settlement, claim flag systems, the war systems, all that type of stuff. Um, let me know if you have any more questions about this system. Leave a comment down below as well, and I'll try to answer that. And thanks for watching.